Hey guys, this is the video many of you asked for. Uh, we're going to talk about how to research crypto. I'm actually very, uh, what's the word? Uh, can't, oh my God, I can't think today. I want to know how many people actually watch this because uh, I'll get to your comments, but I have a feeling many people, when they hit the term, how to research they go oh no i don't want to know how to research i just want to follow youtubers and copy them you know i'm actually curious to know how many people want to know how much work it takes to research a crypto find a crypto so we're going to see because i get asked all the time john can you please make us uh, a video and listen what i'm about to do today which i don't have a script but i took bullet points i have 25 bullet points on how to research a crypto and that's just what i did off the top of my head like what I'm going to show you, I can package this and sell it for like $5,000, but I'm not going to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to actually teach you guys how to become better researchers and essentially better investors. Um, so I woke up today kind of inspired and I wanted to, you know, little we tell you guys what I look for because some of you have been asking me, you know, you found this, you found this, you found this, you know, how do you do it? You know, what do you look for? I can't speak for every YouTuber. Everyone's different. I'm just literally going to tell you what I do, what I've been doing, you know, from the last, what, two and a half years, you know, from some of our calls. In case you're new here and you don't know some of the calls we made, so Caspa at around the penny, uh, say 22 cents, Average Home Finance 14 cents, Pangolin PNG 8 cents, LCX 3 cents, Art Block 7, 8 cents, Quant $40 uh what else what else what else what else what else um turbo three zero three trying to think uh gfi a dollar 55 uh and then recently was ghost we caught that at a dollar 17 and i'm just curious to see where that's at um i see lcx is running up yeah avagachi ghost that one's 216 right now um what else did we find? Let me see real quick. Just giving you guys examples. I'm not here to brag or anything. Like, I'm not perfect. I'm just telling you guys, like, because you're probably going to get some of those questions. Like, why the F should we listen to this guy? Well, I'm just telling you, like, I found the bottoms for many cryptos. So a lot of this is research, emotion, timing. Some of it is luck. I'm not going to lie. Some of it is luck, 100%. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. So, yeah, I'm the best uh, crypto investor. I'm not. I, I learned from fail failing a lot. Um <clears throat> what other picks? Uh, well, Bonk we call early too. Bonk we call early. Um, I forget what price I got at Bonk at. Uh, Bonk was a pretty, I think it was 401. I don't know where it's at now. But but yeah, so I'm going to pull up. What's a good crypto you guys want to see? I guess Casper. You know, I got a lot of questions on Casper. So first off, this is what you have to know as a YouTuber, right? We get tons of crypto thrown at us every single day. So it's not like I see, you know, a hundred shill crypto on the chat and i go great gonna research them all like i have 25 bullet points right here i'm gonna read them out to you so you know how much it takes right this is why the majority when i see comments like john what do you think about this one how about this one hey john i got one right here behind me what about this pick how about this pick and i'm like listen to this it's i tried to put it in order but it's not really in order it's it's whatever as long as you cover all the bases okay the crypto what is it the tech, the consensus, the narrative, the niche, the unique marketing pitch, the competition, the utility, the market cap, tokenomics, allocation, how old is it, what is it on, do they have a website, social media, roadmap, white paper, ecosystem, partnerships, the team, are they docs, anonymous, do they have a resume, are they active, marketplace, catalyst, community, entries, exits, and the risk level of getting in versus staying away. That's 25 bullet points. Okay, I'm sure there's more. It takes me weeks to find crypto. Weeks. Okay, so I'm doing this in a video. I'm going to try to do it in, a, in an hour. So uh, and I'm not sure I'll get to your questions. I'll try. Uh, obviously, super chats are first. But um, yeah, this is going to be a video you guys can watch back for many months. So let's get into it. Let's start with Casper, okay? That's a very popular crypto. I'm sure a lot of you want to know how I found that one. And I did get shilled this a lot before I started researching it, but I never just buy crypto based on someone telling me it's good or, hey, bro, this is the next Bitcoin. Go buy this. This is the next Ethereum. Go buy this. Like, no. 
I just, when I hear something over and over, I usually ignore it. And then at some point, if I, if I do find it interesting, say someone brings up a few good points, I'll put it on my watch list. It doesn't mean it's a guarantee I'm going to just jump into it and start researching it. Watch list crypto for me, I utilize that, which I encourage you to do the same. I use that so I don't forget about it. And then eventually if I want to take it off because I'm not interested or say, you know what, let's look at it now. It's there. So that's the whole point of my watch list, by the way, aside from the crypto I'm holding. So, uh, <clears throat> let's go to cat. It's not going to be in so much order. So we'll, we'll go with the, uh, what is it? Okay. So I'm going to go on Caspa's website, which is what you should do, by the way. Uh, when you find a crypto that you're looking at, you want to go on the website. If they have one, if they don't have one, you're going to be like, okay, what the hell is going on? So about Caspa. I'm going to keep this stupid simple, okay? Stupid simple. What is Caspa? You read this here. Fastest and most scalable instant confirmation transaction layer ever built on a proof-of-work engine. Transaction sent to miners, blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay. Block tag. You guys can read this. Uh, ghost tag protocol. If you research ghost tag, you'll find out. Um, Yonatan was behind that many years ago, that it was integrated with Ethereum. Uh, proof of work. When you see this, this is one of the uh, bullet points, I believe. Yeah, tech consensus. So it's proof of work. So you know right away, okay, it's different. It's a block DAG. Do we know much about block DAGs? Maybe, maybe not. It's proof of work. Okay, most uh, big politicians don't like it, but they're saying they're scalable. So now we got a new tech and a supposedly scalable with a proof of work consensus tech. Okay, so that's good so far, right? So keep reading. <clears throat> okay, one block per second at the ongoing Rust. So right here, Rust. This is a popular programming language for developers. I only know this because I've been, again, researching for years. So Rust is a developer haven. Uh, that's what uh, Solana uses. Um, you got Rust, which they use, which Casper, I think, is already using or starting to. You got Solidity, which is what Ethereum uses. You have uh, Haskell, which is what Cardano uses. Um, there's more out there. I know, I think it's Pipe. I believe Algorand uses Pyth. Um, P-Y-T-H. There's plenty of more programming languages. Some are easier than others. Some aren't. So keep in mind, this is a layer one. So obviously it does matter. You know, it does matter on programming languages. Rust is a very good one for Casper because we saw how popular it is for Solana. Solana, for its market cap size, has a lot more developers than Ethereum did when it was the same size. So that gives you an idea of like, and by the way, happy Easter for those who celebrate. I forgot to say, uh, I saw Jay's comment. Happy Easter, guys. Um, maybe that's why I'm inspired, by the way, because I, I maybe it's because of Easter. But uh, yeah, uh, Rust is very popular. You see with Solana. So to me, it's a green flag for Casper if they use it, right? Um, let's keep going. So obviously, smart contracts are the goal. D5, you know, smart contracts are pretty much the gold standard for a layer one. When they get smart contracts, their ecosystem essentially gets a jump start. They can build projects on top of it, you know, like, like layer twos, uh, meme coins, like legit meme coins on Caspa. Um, that's something you want to see, right? Cardano last cycle went to $3.10 just on the hype and the expectation of smart contracts. So it goes to show you what what you want to look for, right? In a layer one, if they have smart contracts or it's at least down their funnel, they're going to do it. It's bullish. So that's pretty much the gold standard for a layer one. You want to have good tech. Uh, the consensus should be unique, which in this case it is also the tech and um, they use rust or they're going to, and then, uh, you know, apparently this is what we're all here for solving a trilemma. If you research Casper pretty deeper, you can find for yourself, like at least in my opinion, they did they did solve the trilemma because proof of work, when you look at it from Bitcoin's perspective, um, it's secure, decentralized, and in Bitcoin's case, they're not scalable. They're not. You see some scaling solutions, BRC20s. I personally don't like them. I know some of you guys like that mint layer crypto. Personally, I don't. I think they're useless, but... Uh, I like scaling solutions for layer ones, not for Bitcoin. I just don't see the point. But that being said, whole number story. Um, Caspa solving a trilemma. So we know proof of work, it takes about a 51% uh, to hack it. 
Like you have to own more than half of the supply. No one's owning more than half of Bitcoin. Not even Michael Saylor has the money to buy half of Bitcoin. So the likelihood of being hacked, like you see so uh, from a lot of these cryptos, is less likely of proof of work. Proof of work also means the crypto is being mined, which means it has an emission schedule. Proof of stake is where um, they they can literally just print tokens out of thin air, and all it probably has a schedule as well. Most of them do, but it's a little different. Proof of stake is often quote unquote environment friendly. They're usually faster, but they're less secure. For proof of stake, last I checked, I believe you have to only be owning a third of the supply to potentially hack it, which is pretty bad, obviously. But this is what the differences are from proof of stake, proof of work. Proof of stake, you're more scalable. You can market better because you could say environment friendly, green, whatever, but you lose security. And you oftentimes lose decentralization. You know, in Solana's case, they're very fast, but they don't have that many nodes. So they get shut down all the time, like a big red button, which uh, when, when, when volume increases. Then you have Bitcoin, which doesn't get shut down, but you're not doing 10,000 TPS, transactions per second. You know, it's going to take you, like if you go to Starbucks, for example, and say, hey, give me a Frappuccino, which you guys shouldn't be having. You're going to be healthier. And you're like, hey, I'll pay you in Bitcoin. You'll be standing in line for an hour trying to pay for it in Bitcoin or, or at least 10 minutes. And who the hell is going to wait 10 minutes for you in line without cursing you out and saying, yo, get to the back, a-hole. You know, so uh, there's pros and cons, right? So, so far we're on the webpage, right? So we got to, what is it? Block DAG, layer one, tech consensus, proof of work, the narrative. No shit, layer one. Layer ones are what? They're, they're uh, pretty much the big players in this space. Okay, think of it as um, <coughs> layer one is like the uh, blockchains, block DAGs. Uh, what else you got? You got Hedera's Hashgraph. They're like the house, right? And then everything inside the house is like the projects being built. If that's like a way to explain it. Um, layer ones, you got smart contracts. You got NFTs, you got decentralized applications, you got regular transactions, you have developer activity, you got institutions, you got uh, retail, you even got blockchain gaming being built on layer ones. Um, so yeah, layer ones to me are the most bullish. That's why I picked the Casper because layer ones have the best risk to reward for me. Um, so what else we got here? We got uh, the niche. So what specifically is Casper's niche? They're a block DAG that's also proof of work, but scalable, okay? We have yet to see a crypto and also fair launch, which I'll get into in, in a minute. The fair launch makes it unique to me. That was a huge reason why I got into it. It's the only proof of work scalable layer one that I've seen that's fair launch. So it reminded me very much so of Bitcoin. That's their niche. You don't see any crypto really doing that. Most cryptos are like, Ethereum killers, Solana killers, you know, so on and so forth, whatever. They don't market themselves as a Bitcoin killer. I mean, they're not anyway. They're totally different. Bitcoin's obviously the best one. But they have Bitcoin's fundamentals with now more scalability. So it makes it stand out. That's their niche. And you guys see how we only have 400 people watching? This is what I mean. Like the majority of people are like, I want to know how you do it. I want to know how you do it. But in reality, most don't want to do it. Most people, the ones who are watching here, you guys are OGs, right? Because most people don't want to work. When you hear research or anything that takes time, whatever, they don't want to know that. They want to be like, just tell me what crypto to buy, bro. And I'll just, you know, spend my money, whatever. You see what I mean? Majority of people really don't want to research crypto. They don't. They're lazy. I hate to say it, they're lazy. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, at least you guys here will get this, you know, uh, gems here. But um, so unique marketing pitch. That's the next bullet point. Um, again, what makes them different? Their unique marketing pitch is solving a trilemma. But what makes it different than every other layer one that says they're solving a trilemma is they actually look like they did. Okay. Proof of work again, block that tech, but it's scalable. And I forget how many blocks per second now, but I'm not sure how much they update this web page. But that's the unique marketing pitch. Also, no pre-mine, fair launch. That's also a unique marketing pitch. Why should you buy us? Well, because we don't have VCs behind us. Yonatan, who's the founder, by the way, also important, doesn't hold anything. There's no allocation. And we're new tech. We're the first of its kind, block DAG. We're fast. We're secure. We're decentralized. We use <laughs> Rust. We're brand new. And 
we're gonna we're gonna soar. And uh that to me is a big uh overlooked thing, the unique marketing pitch. So next one up is competition. Who's cast was competition? You could say Bitcoin, but Bitcoin's pretty much in its own class. So what, what else do you have there? You have Ethereum, you got Solana, Cardano, Avalanche, uh, say each bar, pretty much every layer of one, right? What's the competition like? Do they have a unique thing to them that's different? In this case, they do. Like I said, all these fundamentals of Caspa is their competition. Why I believe in Caspa so much because it's not just another layer one that has the same tech as everything else. They use Rust, which to me was unique. They uh, they're fair launch. They got Yonson behind it. They're a block DAG. So all this to me is where okay, Caspa has a potentially first movers advantage in competition. There's really no cryptos out there, I mean, at the time anyway, that are block DAGs, that are fair launch, that are proof of work, but still scalable, that have Yonten behind it. So to me, that was a no-brainer. The competition with Caspa to me is very minimal. It pretty much just has, if you ask me, Ethereum was competition and Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's never going to get taken down. And Ethereum is pretty much too big to get overthrown. But in terms of fundamentals, Casper is better. So it has a shot. I don't think it's going to happen, but it does have a shot. So to me, it's everything else is kind of subpar to it when it comes to layer one. This is just tech and stuff, not like price action and multipliers. Um, so next up at the uh, competition, we have utility, which we covered already. It's a layer one. Now we're going to get into, uh, I mean, we'll come back to this. <clears throat> Let's go to uh, the actual numbers side of it, market cap and stuff. That's the next one. We're probably going to bounce around a lot because I don't have this in specific order. I literally just woke up and it was like, you know what? Bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. So, um <clears throat> Okay, so we're on coin market cap. Let me just share this. <clears throat> All right, so price thirteen cents. Market cap for this one is three billion. You always want to check what's circulating. Circulating means what is already out there in the public. What can we buy up? In this case, circulating is twenty three billion. We're just gonna round it down twenty three billion or eighty. 81%, which means what? The inflation is less than 20%, which means what? <laughs> Selling pressure is minimized. And full dilution, which means whatever is not in circulation, whatever is not out there for us to buy, is uh, going to be in circulation. When a crypto <coughs> has full dilution, that's what it means. For example, Ghost, Avagachi from yesterday, that one has full dilution. Their entire supply is in circulation. That's full dilution. So when someone says fully diluted market cap, that's what it means. It means the entire market cap like as a whole with all the circulating supply being in there, 100%. Uh, it's just something to remember, uh, full dilution. Because you hear all these fancy terms, right? Um, so in Casper's case, 3 billion market cap. So it'll, it'll be classified as a mid cap, uh, at least to me. You may say large cap. To me, it's a mid cap. Um, inflation is less than 20%, which is also a... Uh, a bullet point, which I'll just go over later, but um, market cap matters because of entries, exits, risk level. Obviously, you know, many of you guys know large caps are obviously different than micro caps, you know, so on with low caps and mid caps. So um, we'll get into that again. <clears throat> What's next? So market cap tokenomics, which we just touched on. Tokenomics is essentially the makeup of the allocated supply in a sense, the inflation. So in this case, the tokenomics, the full supply is 28.7 billion. That's the full supply, fully diluted supply, 23 billion right now, which means 80, 81%. That is the tokenomics, essentially what the inflation is or, or deflation for that matter, <clears throat> for that crypto, whether they had a burn previously or just locked up supply, if it's a proof of stake, um, or an XRP's case, escrow, you know, you have different uh, terms for it, but uh, that's tokenomics. And then you have allocation, which is kind of mixed in with tokenomics. People tend to say they're, they're interchangeable. It's a little different. So the allocation now is, if they have any, which Casper does it, how much of the supply upon launch was given to the team, 
the founders, maybe they got like a foundation, which Algorand has, HBAR has. Uh, many companies are called foundations or labs. When you see those terms, it doesn't mean they're scams. It just means they probably have a list of employees who have someone to supply. If they're holding someone to supply for free or cheap, that is an allocation. That means they literally had those tokens and they're holding it. Um, that's the whole point of allocation. Uh, venture capitalists that are back in it or behind it, they also have allocations, okay? One of our recent picks that was you know soaring recently was GFI. GFI, uh, Goldfinch Protocol, has roughly seven VCs behind it, which means they have an allocation. Allocations doesn't mean everything. Something because a crypto has a heavy allocation that it's constantly going to be in the graveyard. In this case, if it's a new crypto, which again, the age of the crypto is also on this list, and the venture capitalists have not yet sold, or maybe they have it you know, locked up for a period of time, like in, in Say's case, they have it locked up until August of this year. Those are all factors to consider, right? This is why, again, you can't be lazy. If you if you miss some of these bullet points, like you just say, oh, the allocation is, I don't know, 80%, it's bad, and not realize the team can't sell it till literally next year or something like that. Like, you're just being lazy again. So this is why it's important to do everything, right? So in Casper's case, it was fair launch. Fair launch means no allocation. So that's important to keep in mind. Um, next bullet point, age. How long has it been around? So Caspa, I'm just going to go based on the chart. Uh, obviously, the charts are a little different when it comes to uh, uh, age of cryptos. It just gives me a ballpark range. I really don't care so much as to when it got launched. It's more about when it started being shown on CoinMarketCap. So in this case, 2022. So I forgot to write this down. Another bullet point. Um, how many bull cycles has it been through? In this case, 2022 was the bear market. So this is Casper's first bull cycle to be at the green flag. Does it mean old crypto are bad? We have many picks, LCX, Art Block, um, what else? We're, many examples of cryptos that are booming right now. Uh, Penguin's doing good. That's been around. Um, hold on, let me just pull up here. <clears throat> uh H bar is doing fine. Uh, Quant's doing fine. So, yeah, age of crypto matters, but it's not everything. But some people specifically look for, say, a new crypto. So, this would be something they would check off on their list. Um, <clears throat> Caspa's first bull cycle usually means, which is another bullet point, it's probably not listed on many exchanges because it's newer. Um, they probably are in development mode, which is also important because if they're in development mode, and let's just say you invest today, tomorrow, whatever, you're getting in early. You're getting in before the tech is like realized, before the team starts saying, okay, guys, we're going to market, we're going to revamp this, we're going to build with this, we're going to partner with this, which I just said a few more partnerships. So it's important to know the age of the crypto. Um, also, when it comes to a chart, which is another bullet point chart, um, you want to see how it's been doing physically, okay, without talking to the team, nothing. How's it been doing? So you click the old chart, it's been doing pretty good, right? You click the year chart, same thing, doing pretty good, scaling very well. We're essentially zooming out. The month chart, if you want to zoom in and get uh, the home alone face, like many people, you could do this too and scare shit at yourself. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, really not joking, but you know what I mean. Like uh, This is essentially taking a look inside, zooming out, seeing how it did over the past couple of years. In this case, yeah, it's been less than two years old. Um, so that's important. <clears throat> I hope I get this done. We have what 25 minutes? Then uh I think we're almost halfway through, hopefully. I'm kind of breezing through it a little bit. So at least you guys like you have like the here's the research, and then you just take it and then you can expand a little bit more. Obviously, I can't go to every single article and stuff like that, but the bullet points are enough. Like if I say allocation. You don't physically need me to, to show you like an actual, okay, 50% here, 20% here. Like you, you'll, you'll know what to look for. That's pretty much what I, the goal I want to send out. Uh, so I can't do everything for you guys. You got to, you know, eventually learn to do it yourself too. Um, so where are we at? Age. Okay, next up, exchange listings. So in this case, your Casper, let's go to markets. Coin market cap is a good one to check it out. 
Uh, my personal strategy, this bull cycle, which has been working in bear cycle, is I only buy cryptos on Coinbase, Uphold, and Gemini. I'll be honest. If Caspa was not on Uphold, I would not be holding it. Could care less what you think. If you want to hate, ooh, archetype. Look at that. You're trending on uh, Coin Market Cap. Nice man. March 28th. That's pretty cool. That's all my friends on here. Um, exchange listings to me are important because the majority of retail does not use or do not use VPNs, which is virtual private networks. So if a crypto is say on, let's just say Caspa was an ETH token, for example, every ETH token gets on Uniswap for free. Doesn't take any work. Let's just say um, you pick, you know, X, Y, and Z crypto. It's on Uniswap. It's two years old and it's only on Uniswap. To me, I would never buy it. The access for investors to buy it is minimal. The community is probably smaller. If they are not on any exchange whatsoever, to me, that means the team doesn't give a shit about it. They're not raising money for it. They're not marketing it. They're not pushing it. They're probably rugging it. Like that's all things I look for. It's not just saying, okay, I can buy it here. I can buy it here. I can, you know, sell it here. No, when I look at a marketplace for it, in this case, exchanges, I look at it from this point of view. Caspa has been around since 2022. First bull cycle. What is it on? Gio, Bybit, KuCoin, BitGet, Mexi. It's also on KuCoin, but KuCoin is like, you know, obviously in some bad blood right now. This is pretty proactive for for Caspa. Many of us are waiting for the other tier ones like uh, Gemini, Crypto.com, Kraken, Binance, Coinbase. Patience takes time. But again, this is what you want to see for a crypto. And don't forget, Caspa's team, they don't have as many funds because they don't have an allocation. So they're not going to say, hey, Coinbase, we're going to give you, you know, our 50% allocation and pay you $60 million. Go list us, bro. Like, no, it's fair launch for a reason. So if you want a fair crypto, unfortunately, it's going to take longer to get on exchanges, right? Um, Uphold is not a crypto exchange, but to me, it is. It is. Um, that was the one of the biggest ones for Caspa because when that got listed on there, uh, so many investors aped in, including myself, and we bought the crap out of it. Again, exchange listings are access. This is why I'm not a DGEN VPN searching <laughs> hunter because the way I look at it, people make fun of retail, make fun of normies, whatever. They're not going to change. They're going to come on, whether it's after the halving, the ETF, and guess what they're going to use? Coinbase and Binance. Okay? So if Casper, for example... It's not on Coinbase, not on Binance when it's time to take profits or at least all coin season. Yeah, sure, it'll rise up, but it's not going to get to what I see out there like $10 plus. Definitely not. Um, because if people can't buy it and buy it safely, what does that mean? The price is not going to go up as fast. So for me, I want to see exchange listings from a time perspective to see if the team has been proactive. And getting it listed and marketing it. Um, usually after a year, you should have at least a couple exchange listings or a few, and you should have at least one tier one. This is just my expectations. So uh <coughs> exchange listings matter, okay? So uh yeah, obviously, if you're holding a crypto, I know some of you guys like uh what lit labs. I personally do not like that crypto, I think it sucks. Uh, we'll pull it up real quick, not to get so off track. Um so I want to show you guys an example of a crypto I would not buy. <laughs> I always get asked about that too. Um, besides them having the Elixir thing, which I heard is probably like another crypto migration. Who knows? I'm not going to fud it, but look at this crypto, right? It's been around since 2023, about a year old. So it should have some exchange business, right? Dex, Dex, and Mexi, even though it's a centralized exchange, it's very easy to get on Mexi. Big gets not bad, Uniswap, but they haven't really got on any big exchange yet in about a year. That to me is not good. And then, you know, more factors, less than 10% circulating supply. Guess who's going to dump on you? The team, whoever's holding that supply, very centrally allocated. So when I see this, the lack of exchange listings plus the horrible inflation, that means to me, I'm not going to judge it. The team is probably going to sell. 
either sell that supply to get it listed on exchanges or sell it to rub the F out of you and say, hey, guys, here's a brand new crypto. It's better. Come join us, which I'm hearing rumors. They probably are. So just something to look forward to, right? Um, that's something to marketplace. Uh, I know some of you are probably holding lit. I got asked the other day. I will never buy that crypto. Okay. Again, risk level. That to me is risky. Um, what else? What else? What else? So website, we did that. Social media. Let's go to social media, which in this case is Twitter. I definitely recommend you guys get Twitter, not just to follow me, but like if you want to follow your projects, it, it helps because the teams oftentimes update on Twitter. Like for example, LCX Monty, he's always on Twitter posting. They do AMAs on there. Um, so it definitely helps. Uh just so you know. Uh let's pull up Twitter real quick. <clears throat> um, all right, Casper. So I follow every single crypto that I'm holding. Um, so let me show you this real quick. Time is flying by. Shit, 31 minutes already. All right. So here's Casper's Twitter. Wait, am I following this one? Or am I following? Uh, sometimes I follow the crypto. Yeah, I am following. Okay. Or I'll follow the founder sometimes. If, the, if they're not proactive. So a good rule of thumb, if you want to follow everyone, follow everyone. You can follow... Casper, for example, if you want to follow Jonathan, go ahead. If you want to follow Shay, who's on the team, follow them. Um, I don't follow everybody because I just don't want to have so many, uh, so much clutter in my, in my news feed. But uh, I do, at minimum, follow the project. Um, for example, like uh, uh, like Cardano, right? Many people don't follow Ada, but they follow Charles. And Charles has got his own YouTube channel, which is part of social media. So it, it really depends on the crypto. Um, but yeah, Casper, right? You want to follow it because updates. Look at this. Shay, huge news. I'm so excited that I can basically cannot get straight to the point. I'll question a bit. Okay. I don't know what this is, but I'm just saying, like, you want to follow what they're doing, right? Dear Casper community, that's us. What's going on here? Are they proactive? Are they posting? Okay. Now, let's just say Shay hasn't posted in six months. That would be concerning to me. Okay, let's just say he, uh, I don't know, he's nasty on here, which he's not. He's very nice. Again, I would take that in consideration, okay? Um, so social media, like anything else, measures activity or lack thereof. Um, do they have a big community? Which in this case, let's see, 204,000. I see uh, Casper Silver's on here, Crypto Chris, okay? So that's a pretty big audience, despite, again, only being around since 2022 and not really on too many exchanges. So this, to me, is a win. So uh, social media, if they have, uh, I doubt they're on Instagram, but uh, if they have a YouTube channel like uh, like uh, Cardano for Charles, for example, again, bullish. Because what does social media do? Awareness. Okay. Charles has what? 250,000 subscribers. So that, that's why the community for Ada is so strong, by the way. Even though people like to hate on Ada, even though I no longer hold it because of multiplier potential, the crypto is very strong in question because Charles himself, he's a former ETH founder, co founder, a very smart guy, very influential, and he's proactive. He cares about people, the community crypto the adoption of it he's trying to help people in africa like he's got a very good heart right but more importantly he's got social media so people they watch him they subscribe and they say great i'm gonna buy his crypto you know so it definitely plays a factor right so social media or lack thereof plays a factor let's get into uh the next one which is roadmap and white paper okay not every crypto has this by the way so keep that in mind if they don't have it don't say Oh my God, home alone face. Let's freak out. No, it's okay. It's, um, you want to have one. Ideally, you at least want to see what their vision is, right? For example, LCX. I don't know if Monty actually has a white paper, but he has said before in an interview I saw before AMAs, he wants to be a DeFi bank. If you research his history, he wrote two books, one on the tokenization of assets and one on DeFi being a, de a decentralized finance bank. So when you put that together, it's like, okay, I don't have to see it in writing on the white paper. I know what he wants to do or the goal anyway. So 
Uh, just keep that in mind, right? Don't freak out. Maybe they don't have a white paper because they don't have a website or their website is not active, whatever. Um, all these bullet points, it's not like if one fails, it's bad. You're putting it all together. Think of it like the totality, totality of circumstances. That's a criminal justice term, right? When you're evaluating a crime, it's not just like, okay, evidence bad. It's like, no, evidence, did they do it? Did they have the mind state of committing the crime? Uh, were they coerced? Like you got to take the entire situation at hand, right? So in this case, you're taking all these information pieces and saying, okay, is it old? If, if it's old, are they actually active now? Um, if the team doesn't have a website, do they have Twitter? Do they have social media? So it's all like in conjunction. Okay. So keep that in mind. Um, okay. So roadmap and white paper. Let's go back to the Casper website. Um, and by the way, guys, let me know in the comments or, you know, likes, whatever. If you guys enjoy this kind of video, um, it takes a lot of work to do this. Again, I could wrap this up and say, hey, guys, this is my secret uh, course for Discord. I'm not going to do that. Like, I, Honestly, I really do want to see you guys succeed. I already know, based on who's watching, the majority of people will not find this a, a, a good video because it's too much work for them. Like we're already, what, 36 minutes in and I'm, and I'm still got ways to go. So this is why I tell you guys it takes a lot of time to research. When you guys throw at me 10,000 crypto, I'm not doing this on camera for 10,000 crypto. That's why I discourage in the super chats, hey, John, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And usually it's like it's got a low supply. It's got to be good. And I'm not here to hate on you guys. I know the majority of people asking those questions are beginners. I'm just saying – you see all this time and energy I'm doing to do this? Like, imagine doing that for 20,000 crypto. It's not possible. What I say in the past, I'd rather know a lot about a handful or two of crypto than know a little about everything. The master of everything is the master of nothing. Okay? Some of our picks, the majority of our picks, especially as of recent, have been rocketing, skyrocketing. If I took the energy I was doing to research those and I said, let's get everything, I'd be spreading myself too thin, you know? So just keep it in mind, right? You want to be very good at something, put all your time and energy into that one thing. You want to get ripped in the gym, put all your energy in that gym to lose weight. You want to build muscle, go to the gym and freaking lift some heavy weight. You want to do it together? Congrats. You, you won't do it together. Very unlikely. It, it's hard, right? So you got to pick one thing. Or two things and just do it, give it your all, and then you move on. You know, you, same with relationships, right? You don't want to date five people. You want to go for one person only. Doesn't work out, you move on to the next, okay? Don't date 100 people. You'll get caught. And then, again, energy, right? Can you really devote texting 10 girls or 10 guys if you're a girl? Like, it's very hard, right? Eventually, you're going to stop texting this person or this one's going to get mad because you didn't answer them back in two minutes. Like, you see what I mean? Like, Put all your energy into something and then just your wall and then move on from there. A uh, little life lesson for you guys, whatever age you are. So let's go back to the website. Um, <clears throat> we're on the white paper, right? Um, let's see if they have it on the website, first of all. I forget where I found it. It's been a long time since I found Casper's uh, white paper. I think it's on here, though. Let's see. So vision, I'm going to click on this one. Vision is usually what they would rename uh, white paper. But let's see. So obviously you want to read this. The vision behind it is to build a Nakamoto-like service. That's pretty interesting, right? Because a lot of people think Yonatan, who's the founder of this, is Satoshi Nakamoto. And the fact that they had this here, either they're listening to us and they decide to put this in here to cause FOMO, which, again, it works beautiful to their, to their, uh, to their vision. And here they mentioned Satoshi. So, yeah, their vision, and I said before in videos, right, they want to take what Bitcoin was originally created to do. This is essentially their roadmap too, right? Peer-to-peer -peer cash. That's their vision. So vision is kind of like intertwined with roadmap. Um, every layer of one's vision is to be the best one for retail use and institutions. Some specialize in certain ones, like, uh, like Say wants to uh, – I think says more geared towards institutional clients. Last I checked, uh, H bar same thing. Um, Caspa, Solana, they're more geared towards retail because you know Solana is very cheap, and Caspa is just 
trying to be the go-to for everything. Um, so vision is important. Bitcoin was originally a peer-to-peer -peer cash before it became a store value, or at least deemed to be so. So Casper's vision is to take that initial vision and turn it into a more scalable, better layer one. That's their vision. It's important, right? Green flag to me. My allergy is so bad. Sorry. Um, so obviously read this. Just to save time, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Uh, again, social media, Discord, they have donations, which I'm not doing. But again, they're not. There's no allocation, so I'm assuming they, they have to take some donations. Uh, let's see. Features, resources. Um, this is a little bit in their ecosystem. You know, definitely bullish. Uh, let's get rid of this. I don't want to see this. Um, the exchange listings. Swaps. Change now was popular. I remember that last cycle. Not last cycle, sorry, in the bear market. Um, it's all important, right? It, it, if it creates exposure, marketing, advertisement for the crypto in question, it can only help. Uh, developments, let's see this. Um, planning, development, testing, let's see. Um, is this it? Uh Oh, here's the languages, right? Python, Rust. That's what I said, right? What's this? Hmm. Something to look forward to. All right. See, you learn something new every day. Um, mining. They had their emission schedule here. Okay. The hash rate, the block reward. So this page is very nicely done, and you can tell it's in their colors, too. You see how all the words are pretty much in their colors? Um, so far, I don't see their white paper here. Um, uh, let's see. Maybe it's in the... It has to be about here. Hold on. Um, maybe it's in here again. Maybe I missed it. Uh So if I can't find white paper, I'll search on Google and look for it. And I'll, I'll consider the source. But let's see. Let's first go to um, contributors. Let's see what this is. So here's the founder. We're gonna, I guess, you know, we'll do, we'll do this over here. Jonathan Sampolinski. He's rumored to be Satoshi. I'm not gonna say he is, but you want to research who they are. In this case, he's Doc. Doc means you have a face, you have a name. Anonymous for cryptos to me, unless it's a mean coin or Bitcoin. I'm not interested. When you have an anonymous founder, it's very hard to gauge if he's genuine, legitimate, because someone that docks himself like this, if he were to rug pull the project, say he got allocated all, all the supply and he rugged it, no like no smart guy is going to say, hey, guys, here's my name. Here's my information. I'm going to rug you. And then had the authorities catch him, right? Usually that happens, usually, because some people are freaking stupid. Usually it happens with anonymous teams. Um, so that's important too. It's a bullet point as well. Um, DAG Labs is created by Jonathan. He's in Ethereum's white paper, which designed a ghost DAG protocol. So this guy, when you research him and his resume, which is not a bullet point, check out the team and the resume, uh, whether it's LinkedIn, which I don't have a LinkedIn profile, but sometimes you can find workarounds to do it. I'm not going to do it here, but LinkedIn is very good. They're on LinkedIn. Uh, you can search on Google, try to find a good source. In this case, when you research him, You'll find out very quick. He's been around in the space for many years. And he also, every time you see him, you see this attached to him, Ghost Dag Protocol. When you research that, it's literally what designed Ethereum's tech. And Ethereum's the biggest layer one. So you know right away, like when they say this stuff, reputation, he has a reputation. Again, bullish. 2013, Bitcoin was created in what? 2009, I believe, or eight, around there. And uh, right here, Ethereum's white paper, exactly what I said, right? And this is, you know, obviously he's in Harvard. Definitely important. Let's see who else we can find. So here's Shay. He's pretty much the more outspoken guy. So here, look, the team, right? We'll get to the team since we're here. They're all doxxed. They got their resumes here for the most part. If you want, if you want to find their LinkedIn, which in this case, LinkedIn, Twitter, I don't know what this is, um, Facebook, 
Twitter. See, not everyone has LinkedIn. See, Shay doesn't have LinkedIn. That's fine, whatever. But it has some background on him. This guy, core developer, LinkedIn. Don't know what that is, but something to look into, right? Um, because you want to see what their background is, right? Um, there was a crypto illuvium <laughs> where uh, I'll never forget this, right? I was looking to buy it and, um, you know, a while back and I'm like, oh, game looks cool. Everything looks good. I was researching one of the founders and I saw their resume on LinkedIn was they put like, I don't know why they would do this, but it was like expert penny stock trader. And I saw that and I'm like, what the F? And, you know, just being a stockhead before crypto, I'm like, penny stocks are like gambles. I'm like, this guy is literally saying in his like LinkedIn profile that he's a former like high risk trader at the very least, not gamble, but a high risk trader. I'm like, that has nothing to do with Alluvium. Okay. I want to see someone that, okay, Alluvium's a game. Is he a gamer? Is he a computer programmer? Does he have some type of resume in the friggin' niche? Like, you'd be surprised. Uh, some companies, they have weird uh, founders. I'm not saying he was weird. He actually commented and explained himself. But I said, listen, I would take that shit out of my biography. I would never put something like that in my, my biography. Um, so you want to check the team out and see if they have a background, right? For example, Algorand, uh, Sylvia McCauley, that guy's background in crypto is ridiculously good. Cryptography, uh, what was the other one? Uh, ZK Rollups or something. And uh there was one thing he he uh, specialized in. I can't remember off the top of my head. Is it zero knowledge proofs? Maybe I forget. But he was an MIT professor. Guy was a freaking genius. He had good ties to, to everyone, like really influential people. So you want to know who your founder and team is linked to, right? Um, in this case, here's the team. And then you have scroll down here, core developer. So look, look. This is why I like Casper a lot. You got Yonatan, who's the genius behind it, rumor Satoshi, and then all you have is developers. You don't have a chief financial officer. You don't have a chief marketing officer. So um, depending what you're looking for, that can be bullish to you, bearish to you, whatever. Listen, I hold many BC cryptos. I am buying the crap out of Goldfinch Protocol. We were just talking on Discord. Highly BC back crypto. But again, when you consider the rest of the catalyst, it's newer. Uh, first bull cycle. Um, the BCs are going to market it this cycle, this catalyst, it's in DeFi, the future. Like you gotta take everything in totality. You can't just say BC backed garbage, fair launch, the holy grail. Because look at look at Casper now, right? It's not doing great compared to his other crypto because the who you know part is not helping them, the connections, right? Because it's fair launch, because there's no BCs behind it, their marketing is garbage. It is, it's garbage. But that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means you have to know what you're getting into. It's the best risk to reward, in my opinion. It doesn't mean it's going to 100x overnight, though. It just means, to me, it's a safer crypto that will have its day soon. But because it's not marketed, you're not going to see other things like you're seeing for VC back crypto, which is what? Partnerships, marketing, and exchange listings. Again, important totality of to, to, totality of circumstances for criminal justice for here, totality of everything, research. Um, so that was what? Uh oh yeah, the, the roadmap and white paper, right? Uh let's see if we can find it real quick. I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you guys, but uh I know I found Caspers at one point. Let's see. It's definitely on Google somewhere. Um the roadmap, by the way, I'm not gonna pull that up. That's like their stages, right? Um, some cryptos have it very easy to read. It'll be like, like for example, Avagachi. They said Q2 of this year, they're going to have, uh, what's it called? Gachi something. Uh, I forget the name now. It was called something Gachi, a layer three roll up to help scale their gaming console. That's a catalyst, right? That's in their roadmap. It's like the future of what's going to happen. Um, I know Monty has it as well. I remember seeing it. Uh, Ethereum's roadmap, for example, they want to become scalable with sharding. Sharding is when the blockchain splits and they can all do what a, the original blockchain can do, which is transact. That's their roadmap. Uh, Ethereum migrating from proof of work to proof of stake, that was in their roadmap. So, um, yeah, roadmap is kind of like what's going to come down the pipeline. And then white paper is like the – it could include it as well. They often do, but it's kind of like the – the overall vision, roadmap, and uh, why they created the crypto. So it gives you a, a kind of like an overview, um, if that makes sense.
Uh, so, so right here, Cast White Papers. It's called whitepaper.io. That's the website. So let's see if this is the one. Um, and it is. Okay, so let's share this. Always make sure the source is good on Google. You can use Google. Just make sure it's good. Make sure it's not a, you know, some idiot just created the, the uh, domain and was like, hey, guys, this is my opinion on it. Um, you always want to make sure um, .org websites are good. .org, uh, .com, depends on the one, which one, uh, .io, which is this one, is good, you know, so it depends on the uh, domains, right? Just make sure you research the authors if they're actually legitimate. In this case, I don't have to because I read this before. Um, my God, I cannot talk today. Too much caffeine, it makes me talk so fast. Um, so here's that white paper, right? Look, Yonatan, School of Engineering, Shay, they got their emails. Aviv, um, their white paper here. Let's see if this is easy to scroll down in. Obviously, it's not. Um, introduction, the Phantom Protocol. You know, you want to spend a lot of time reading this, right? You want to understand it fundamentally, understand the tech, understand what they were thinking, right? The white paper is like what they were thinking, like what the overall mindset was before they uh, launched it. So just read this. We're at 50 minutes, so I don't want to spend too much time. But look, it explains everything, how the tech works. You can learn a lot. Again, this is 14 freaking pages. You see why it takes me many weeks of researching? You can't do this in 30 minutes. You know, some of you guys ask me, what do you think about this crypto? Can you imagine doing even just this, reading the white paper? Can you imagine doing all this in 30 seconds and saying, okay, bullish bearish? You really can't. So it's a lot of work. Um, so white paper, yes, read that. Um, I want to get the majority of this done, so I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to finish this. We're almost done. Uh, ecosystem partnerships. You can find us on the website. In Casper's case, they showed the exchanges, the apps, the wallets. When they get smart contracts, do they have projects, layer twos if they need it? Which in this case, I don't really see the need for that um meme coins on it anything right projects that's the ecosystem uh hbars case they have a dex saucer swap it's uh part of their ecosystem say they have a meme coin called Sayin. again part of their ecosystem um some of you guys like myro that's solana's meme coin part of their ecosystem so you want to see what what's going on right um the more projects being built the more activity you see the more total value locked if it's proof of stake Usually, the stronger the ecosystem, usually. Um, so it's very important. Uh, partnerships, some like to rip on this. I think it's very important. If you have partnerships, you have marketing, you have connections, okay? Um, definitely matters to me. Obviously, if they partner with a big bank or they partner with uh, someone huge or you see other cryptos like LCX, they're partnering with Chainlink, uh, Hedera, Polkadot, uh, I think quant, I'm not sure. Um, but like those kind of partnerships matter as well. So again, the who you know connections matter. Um, team docs are anonymous. We went over that already. Team resume, we did that. Team activity, we did that. Marketplace, okay? Back to the uh, tokenomics. Let's go to coin market cap again. I touched on it before, but I want to bring this up. Um, we're almost done, guys. And you can always watch the playback, obviously, you know? All right, so, so marketplace. You guys heard me say it before. You have what's called a centralized marketplace and decentralized marketplace. Centralized marketplace means, which I'll get into, top wallets hold a certain amount of crypto, um, which means you have usually more selling pressure. It also means the supply, like in Lit Labs case, where they have less than 10% in circulation, that's a very centrally allocated crypto. The majority of supply is locked up or being held by someone else, which makes it centralized. In Casper's case, they have over 80% circulating, so that is decentralized. The retail, you and me, can buy this up. We can buy the 80 81%. The remaining 20% is being held, in, in this case, they're being mined. So this makes it decentralized. I usually prefer 
decentralized marketplaces, but it doesn't mean centralized marketplaces are bad either. Again, you want to research lockups, right? What's two examples? Goldfinch Protocol, which has like 25% circulating, and Say, which also has around 25% circulating. But in Say's case, the team is locking it up for a certain amount of time. You got to research this, right? Um, what was I uh, going at? Uh, something about Marketplace. Um, oh, yeah, the rich list. So Casper is hard to find, but I'll show you guys an example of a rich list. Um, we'll pull up LCX. It'll be better to explain LCX because uh, Casper is hard to find the, the top 100. Um, we can try it, though. Let me see if I can find it, actually, first. Um, Coin Carp is what I use. Okay, I think we do have it, actually. Let's see. Awesome, we do. Okay, cool. So let's pull up the rich list. So CoinCarp is a website I use. I want to see if the top 100 is spread. Again, if it's a new crypto, a micro cap, don't expect to have a 300K holders or a million holders. You're probably going to see a top 100 that's biased and says like 95% of the holders because if they only have 2,000 holders, 5,000 holders, they're not going to see... 10,000 people holding 1% of it. It's going to be maybe a top wall holding, I don't know, 50% of it. Then you're going to see down the list, you know, as people start buying it and holding it, you're going to see the list and the marketplace become what? Decentralized. So let's get into, um, let me uh, share this with you guys. Um, so top wallet is Gate.io and Mexi. Bullish. And they're only holding... 4%, 3%, and here's uphold, less than 2%. So now when I see this, I'm like, wow, this is great. And this is my first time actually seeing this for Casper. Um, I don't know why it took me so long to like do this. I actually want to see where I stack up in this. Um, we're still in the millions here, so I'm nowhere near that. Um, so, okay, Rust, Rust Fund, that's good. Again, they're they're fair launch, so this is good. They're working towards uh, getting closer to Rust. Um, I see Bit gets there, Bybit. So the majority of these holdings are from exchanges, guys. This is very bullish, very bullish. Um, let's see. I don't even think I'm in the top 100 actually. Yeah, top 100. Damn, you got to have over 20 million, and even that is zero point. 0.9%. Ridiculous. That is crazy. So if you go up here, holders, 329,000. Pretty good. Top 10, 16%. One of the best I've ever seen. Top 100, 34%. And if you go to that website where it shows you Aquaman, whales, dolphins, fish, you can see it's pretty spread. I'm considered a shark. But, um... That's very bullish. That means less selling pressure, less manipulation. Like, let's just say the top 10 wallets were holding 80%. And let's just say it was the team. They can manipulate and say, okay, guys, let's sell some of our supply, like XRP does from time to time, cause some selling pressure and freak retail the F out and have them sell. And then we'll buy back in and make it go up. Some companies do that. I'm not saying XRP does that. I'm just saying that's where price manipulation matters. Um, also something I forgot to mention with the supply, make sure it's either a fixed supply, meaning no more is created, or if it's inflationary, which means they get more over time, whether it's staking or just printing tokens or deflationary, it's getting burned or it gets used for fuel transaction fees, whatever. Um, so yeah, here's the, uh, the, uh, marketplace and the rich list. That's what 26 points now, actually. Um, Catalyst, in this case, Catalyst for Caspa, smart contracts, exchange listings. Um, that's pretty much the biggest catalyst for it, aside from exposure. I mean, this many holders is already crazy. And it's, it's already in the top, what, like 30 or something like that? 40, maybe it fell down now because it is priced. But um, it's in the top 100 already, despite no tier one. That's a big catalyst yet to happen. Um the community, again, social media, 
YouTube, who's covering it? Pretty much every YouTuber now covers it. When I was covering it at a penny, it was like me and like maybe one or two YouTubers covering it, and that was it. Now you've seen everybody talk about it, but again, it's bullish because community growing in numbers. Um, entries and exits, the last on the list, and risk level. So now we're going to get back to coin market cap. We're almost done, right? An hour already, but we'll, we'll, we'll finish this up. Um, so, so when I buy crypto and I bought the bottom for many cryptos, including cash, but what I do is first I assess my risk. Is it a risky crypto? You can base that off market cap, which at the time it was not a, not nowhere near close 3 billion. But in this case, I based it off the niche narrative. Uh, sorry, I thought I was sharing this, um, which in this case was a layer one. Layer ones to me are very low risk in most cases, not your brand new layer ones where the teams are anonymous, but in this case, it's low. They're usually low risk, okay? Lower risk anyway. Um, entry, it was a penny. Um, when I researched the fundamentals, the tech, who was behind it, all this other research, I was like, holy crap. The risk to reward was like, here's the risk off camera and here's the reward. So I aped in like crazy. My first purchase was actually 162,000 uh, CASPA, not not dollars, because Uphold only let you do it, uh, put in 2,500. My first purchase was a penny and a half, and then it dipped down to a penny and a quarter, and I bought a crap ton more. I bought the majority of my bag sub three cents, because when you see a good risk to reward, and you know people are going to eventually ape in, that's where entries matter, right? And I'm like, holy crap, this one penny entry, two cent entry, three cent entry, hell, even five cents, despite flutters. And by the way, you're going to see that when you see bottoms in price, you're not going to see everybody agreeing with you. The majority will disagree with you. They will say you're stupid. They will say it's going lower. They will say this one's better. It sucks. There's nothing good about it. So you got to factor that in, right? Emotional control is huge and buying uh, good prices. Um, Art block, same thing. Buying at seven cents, eight cents. It's an old crypto. They didn't do shit in five years. The team sucks. He's over in Asia. It does nothing for the US. This one's better. Two dollars now, right? So again, examples. I can do this all day, by the way. <laughs> um, so entries and exits. I was like, okay, a penny is an amazing entry. Worst case, a dollar. Goes to five dollars. That's a beautiful reward. Exit plan, pretty good to me. Gonna get in. So uh, yeah, entries and exits. Obviously, um, for example, Bitcoin. You're not gonna buy Bitcoin at seventy k unless your risk is like, you know what? It might go to one hundred and fifty k. I'll buy it for you know a two x whatever. So that you have to answer. Um, Obviously, you want to factor in greed there. You want to be like, okay, it's only 100x. I want a 500x. Like, that's just stupid. You'll miss out altogether. And that happens a lot. You'd be surprised. Um, so, yeah, I think I covered most bases here. We're at an hour. Um, unfortunately, I can't get to the majority of your questions, but I'll do these two super chats. Um, just let me know. You know, comment after this video. I'll check, I'll try to watch the playback and see what you guys thought. Um, I'll go through them real quick. I'll just scroll through, but uh, I hope this video helped you guys. I really, I really do. And if you want to join Patreon and Discord, I'll put a link in the pinned comments down below. Obviously, if you want a faster way for research, you want to reach out to me. Maybe you want a portfolio review, which I think the elite tier might have just sold out though. But I'll probably open up like five more spots. Um, if you want to be part of uh, live streams, Q and A's like this, um, conference calls, I do them every single Sunday. Tomorrow's my next one where we talk on the live stage events and, you know, you can ask me questions that way. Um, obviously buy alerts, sell alerts. If you bought GHST with me yesterday, you're up pretty decently today. If you bought GFI, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you're up like a two, three X now. Um, so if you want those or my sell alerts, when we take profits, definitely, you know, encourage you guys, but, but come in there with the right mindset. Don't come in there and be like, when next gem, when next this? I'll just ignore you. So listen, I'm a nice guy, but when I see a certain behavior, I do not promote that, okay? It's not a pump and dump community where buy and hold investors. I am teaching you guys to become good investors. I could care less if that makes you want to stay away. I'd rather have a good member who wants to learn, 
who becomes better, which we have like at least 12 people now who have made six figures. One guy is almost on his way to making seven figures. Okay. I rather see a small group kill it and make a lot of money than a bunch of, Hey John, one next gem going to unsubscribe, going to leave because you didn't put a bio word out in two days. Like I could care less. You can leave right now. Could care less. The goal is to help you guys change your life, the old fashioned way. And that is with hard work, research, time, patience, perseverance, consistency, and just day in and day out, putting in the work. Um, so just, just so you know what you're getting into if you join, um, Crypto shock. Retirement looks good on you, brother. Yeah, I'm very, like, I was just talking to someone yesterday about this. Like, uh, yeah, even though I'm considered working right now, this to me, I love it. I'm very passionate about it. You know, crypto has already changed my life and we're still in the bull cycle. Like my portfolio, I'll be honest, it's, it's seven figures already, you know, a consolidated seven figures. So I'm very happy. But again, a big reason how I got to this uh, point already is because I sacrificed for years. I was buying in the red. Like my channel started in the bear market. I was working double shifts. I was living check to check, which I don't recommend, but I was doing it. I was dumping everything into the market. I was buying beat up crypto and nobody was talking about it. And I don't know if you were here for that long uh, shock, but I had so many Discord members leave because picks like R Block were doing bad, LCX. Uh, they're like, I'm just gonna buy cash, but I'm not. I don't care about his Discord. And now look at this. I'm in seven figures now because I maintain the course. Not to be a cocky asshole. I'm just saying, like, I maintain my conviction. I double down, and and now I'm getting rewarded. Right? I sacrifice. I have delayed gratification. I worked my freaking ass off. You know, I. And now I can say I, I left my job and now I, I can say retirement's looking good. So again, all this is hard work, right? You can't just say one, two, three, become a millionaire. Like you got to really take time to, to put this plan in place, right? Because you're going to have days where you wake up and you feel like shit, you feel like garbage and you're like, oh man, my pick is not moving today, but let me, you know, close the laptop, close the app and let's go to the gym today or what's the stress. You come back in two months or six months or a year, you see it up like this. So a lot of this is a waiting game. It's timing, right? It's timing and some of it is luck, I'll be honest. But um, if you have the right mindset and the right work ethic, you can really change your life. And we're seeing it. You're seeing it with me and I'm seeing it with my Discord members, right? We have at least 12 people who already had their bull cycle and we're still super early in the bull cycle. We're pretty happy. So I consider all these gains icing on the cake. But uh, again, only you. And whoever's watching, only you can change your life if you really want that bad. So, um, but yeah, man, thank you for your uh, support. You've been a member here for eight months on YouTube, and I think you've been a member of my Discord now for like two years. So I really appreciate you. Art of Joey, what is up, man? Yay, the research video is here. People pay attention to know what to look for in crypto. Good job, John. Keep up the excellent work. Yo, good to see you, man. I'm very happy to see you here. Um yeah, I was very happy to do this. You know, I think this is a video that many people needed to see. Obviously, it didn't get many views. People just inherently are lazy. It is what it is. Not going to hate. But again, now I have a video where if I get a question, hey, John, how do you find this? How do you find this? Link, 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 link. So it'll be easy to refer to them. But uh, thank you, Joy. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. And I hope you're doing well yourself. Um, I think that's going to be it for today. I'll just scroll down real quick and see if I find any funny comments like this one, like the stream. <laughs> uh, so let me know what you guys th uh, thought about this, the video. <laughs> Malik Crypto John. <laughs> Let's see them bullet points. You see that? And I missed some. <clears throat> How to grow a new beard. <laughs> Tutorial coming soon, guys. <laughs> yeah, this thing's getting long, but I love it. Um, I'm just going through real quick to see if I you know, find any you know, interesting comments. I couldn't do a Q&A today, but I think the majority of you guys don't mind. 
Um, and by the way, I will bring this up, AB. I think you're in my Discord. Um, this is something you have to deal with with your own research, right? I know a lot of you guys want me to talk about certain crypto because you think it's going to pump the crypto, which sometimes it does. Um, don't rely on me making a video, right? If you buy a crypto, it's because you bought it, you're bullish on it, because you researched it, okay? Even on my Discord, I get questions all the time. Hey, John, when's this video coming out? When are you doing this? And I ignore everybody. I do not care. It's not me being an asshole again because it's the mentality that I don't like. I don't want someone to be like, hey, John, can you please talk about this? Hey, John, you still bullish on this, which I know is coming from most beginners. I understand. I'll never be like, you're an asshole. I'll never be mean to them. I'm just saying like, that's the mentality that I want to fix one person at a time because I want you guys to be like, okay, if John doesn't make a video on Caspa or Quant or Say or GHST for two weeks, I'm going to be okay holding this crypto. I don't want you guys to be like, hey, John, you haven't mentioned this video for a week and I'm getting scared. Can you make a video? Like, no, I'll never do that. I don't care if you're in my Discord. I don't care if you're VIP. Could care less. Out of respect for what I want to do with you guys, my vision for you guys and teaching you, Sometimes what you want to hear is not is it's going to be what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. So in my case, I'm not going to just say, OK, great, let's make a video on it. I'm going to say, no, no, no. You got to research. You got to believe in it. If you don't, then sell that shit. That's just my honest, genuine advice. Um, so I know you're I know you're a member. You're probably going to hate me on Discord. But listen, it's something you need to hear. Not what you want to hear. I know you, what you want to hear is, hey, CTX, go into the moon. Like, no, no, no. I'm not going to just give you confirmation bias because you're you're not certain about your crypto. You're not convicted. So, um, yeah. Mm. All right, guys. Yeah, I'm a little tired now. So it's an hour and 15, very long live stream. Um, I'm going to end it here. Whoever joins Discord, I'll see you there. Thank you guys for the live stream. I really hope it helped you. I had a lot of fun doing it. And again, I had no script. I just had <laughs> literally just regular bullet points. Uh, just a little insight as to how I research. You know, obviously watch the playback and see if it helps you. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next.